Hello everyone. My name is Bita Tamasezi, Knowledge Management and Evaluation Specialist at Encompass LLC, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to 10 Minutes to Task, a short educational webinar brought to you by the Encompass Task 4 ICT Partnership. Today you will hear a 10-minute presentation on an educational topic. Please submit your questions throughout the presentation in the Q&A space in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. At the end of the presentation, our speaker will answer as many questions as time permits. Encompass leads a partnership of 10 organizations with proven expertise in international health, bringing to you innovative approaches and cost-effective ICT solutions. We believe successful development solutions must be country-led, adaptable, linked to quality, and inclusive of all stakeholders. Today, our presentation is brought to you by Forum One, and our topic is Using Social Media to Promote Health Messages in Developing Countries. Our presenter is Mike Shoag, Managing Director of Government Services at Forum One. Mike, it's good to have you with us. Over to you. Thank you, Bita. Hi, everybody. Um, as you heard, I'm Mike Shoag from Forum One Communications. Forum One is a full-service digital communications agency. And our clients include many of the largest foundations, most influential think tanks, and federal agencies. We only work with mission-driven organizations that are trying to improve the world, and health and international development are two of the sectors that we specialize in. So in terms of social media, today I'm going to give several examples of how SMS or text messaging and social media are changing lives around the world. And some of the key points are uh, that social media and SMS can be effective tools for changing behavior, for collecting big data, and in many cases for saving lives. But for a campaign to be successful, it must have some key attributes. It must, must be focused on education and behavior change. The campaign must have a clear message that is easily understood, and it must have a known target audience so that you can craft your message and tactics to meet them where they are, using the language, the technology, and the messaging that's most appropriate for the, for the target audience. Also remember that social media is a two-way communications tool, so you can both provide messages and get feedback. And it can be also used to gather data to predict health outcomes that save lives. And we'll go through all of these uh, in the next 10 minutes or so. As we all know, social media can be used to push out information. This can get the word out to people about health, for example. Some efforts in this regard are not very helpful at improving health outcomes, such as the one seen here. These tend to fail because they're too general, they don't understand their key audience, and they don't provide a specific call to action. They don't pe tell people what they should be doing about it. However, the rising number of social media campaigns, blogs, and social media discussions of health matters in developing countries um, have shown that some of these efforts to push out information have been much more effective. Charity Water, for example, has been extremely effective at getting the word out about their work and the need for clean water in Africa via social media, and they also use videos and other online efforts. And their fundraising efforts have really paid off, not just in raising funds, but in helping them to get clean water throughout Africa. If you haven't seen some of what they're doing, you should definitely check out Charity Water on the web. Another good example is Global Giving. Um, global Giving has taught many nonprofits in developing countries how to effectively use social media to raise funds. The Hero Rats Project, for example, trains rats to sniff out landmines so they can be disarmed and removed. It's such a cool program, and they really wouldn't exist without social media. They've raised tens of thousands of dollars from individual donors around the world via these social media campaigns. And in the past, they would have needed to write a lot of grant proposals and done a lot of other kinds of work to get funding. And in their case, it's the rats who become the stars of their social media campaigns. But as we all know, social media is more than about fundraising. It can help with health outcomes by means of other things like peer pressure. Those who use social media, for example, to post their goals and progress towards things like losing weight statistically lose more weight and keep it off longer 
than those who do not share their goals and progress socially. In developing countries, this can lead to healthier eating choices and other positive outcomes. The great thing about using social media to help achieve these goals for individuals is that it can be a much cheaper way to see outcomes. And beyond targeted social media campaigns, SMS or text messaging campaigns have been very effective at everything from increasing prenatal health to reducing HIV trans transmissions. SMS can be particularly effective in the poorest countries where few people have smartphones. One program which ran in South Africa reached truck drivers via text messages with only one message per day. It focused on prevention and treatment information about HIV, STDs, tuberculosis, and other communicable diseases. They included information on health, myths, and stigmas. And the results were so successful that the program was soon expanded. Another example is in Indonesia, where there's a high rate of infant mortality. Uh, they created SMS Bunda, a text messaging service for pregnant women and postnatal mothers. SMS Bunda provides women with life-saving information during pregnancy and in the early days after delivery. These messages help women identify signs that they or their babies are sick enough that they may need to visit a health facility, which is critically important. Taking it a little bit um, closer to home, SMS messages are currently being used to advise people about Ebola in Sierra Leone and other West African nations. The Red Cross and Red Crescent, for example, can send text messages to every switched on handset in certain areas. So in Sierra Leone alone, the system has been sending out about 2 million messages per month providing information about Ebola. The CDC is also working to track where phone calls to Ebola centers come from and help predict where the next outbreaks will occur geographically. They can then target resources to those areas and help stop transmissions before they grow out of control. It's pretty cool. One of the most exciting developments with social media is the ability to aggregate vast amounts of information, like social media posts, and use big data to parse it for results. So let's take the case of HealthMap, which I'm showing now for a few minutes. It's an online mapping tool that was able to predict the Ebola outbreak nine days before, before WHO issued its first statement recognizing the current outbreak. HealthMap was developed by a group of researchers and epidemiologists at Boston's Children's Hospital. And the tool relies on an algorithm that analyzes social media posts, news reports, medical workers, social networks, and government websites. And it shows data on interactive maps. The dot on the screen shows that on March 14th, HealthMap predicted Ebola based on this data. Over time, they've kept track of social media postings, news, and other information to keep their maps up to date as the Ebola epidemic has progressed. And once Ebola began spreading internationally, their maps began to look like this, including showing cases in uh, Africa, the US, and Spain. And on an interesting side note, the New York doctor who had Ebola, who was let out of the hospital yesterday, um, had a personal connection I was surprised to see my grad school roommate in articles about Ebola in New York City. Fortunately, he's not the doctor who contracted Ebola, but he's the city councilman who represents that part of the city. So he played a role in helping to keep the panic down about Ebola. So we've gone over a number of successful SMS and social media campaigns. Here are a few tips for making sure that your next effort is successful. First of all, you have to know your goals. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Secondly, you have to understand your audience. Who are you trying to reach or trying to listen to or collect data from? Once you know your audience, you have to understand which social media channels your key audience uses, and that will tell you what to focus on. So you don't want to focus on Twitter if they're all on Facebook or a local social media channel. And don't assume that you know. Look at the data. Talk to them. Use focus groups, surveys, interviews if you need to to find out. Next, you need to focus on actions. What actions do you want your users to take? Is it behavior change? Is it calling someone for help? Is it looking for symptoms? Figure out what actions you want them to take to be successful. And only after you've answered these questions can you develop the campaign. 
Develop the social media campaign or project to specifically meet the needs of your target audience. So if you're interested in using social media or other digital tools to help improve health outcomes through social media, interactive maps, infographics, big data, or online communities, then we would be happy to talk to you. And Vita, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I guess if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type them up in that Q&A box on your right hand, lower right hand of your screen. Um, while we're waiting, perhaps, Mike, you could, um, you could let us know maybe what are some of the challenges of using cell phones? Um, you know, can you save money using cell phones, but do you lose something in terms of effectiveness? Uh, what do you think about some of the challenges that are there? Sure. Well, as we know that in in many in much of the developing the developing world, um, cell phones are the main means of communication or the main means for getting onto the internet, and so they can be a very effective way, as opposed to um, online efforts at, at reaching and communicating with people. Um, uh, but you know, some of the drawbacks of cell phones are that some people have feature phones, some people have smartphones, and people use them in different ways. And you also have to develop for it. If you're doing um, more than SMS messaging, you have to develop for a number of different formats. There are different screen sizes, different resolutions, different functionality. And it can be challenging to make sure that your campaign meets all of the different uh, cell phone requirements. Thanks. So Keegan is uh, telling me that there is a question that's come through. I can't see it on the screen, but perhaps, Keegan, you could read it to us. Sure. Uh, Matt Sata has asked, could you comment on the challenges, if any, in getting social media data to do analysis? Sure. That's a great question. Um, so there are, there are a number of, of different tools out there for collecting data to do social media analysis. Some of them um, come from the social media channels themselves, but oftentimes you want to use a third party uh, kind of data analysis provider. So you can send your messages through a service like um, Buffer and they'll uh, think about the reach that you have. They can schedule when they go out. They can tell you how many people they're reaching and, and other statistics about it. Um, but if you, if you want to collect the data, then you, you probably need to uh, use a, one of the third-party providers to help you kind of manage the messaging and show the data that's coming in through that. Okay, great, thanks. So maybe Keegan, if I could have you pull up the uh, the feedback boxes. Um, you know, we really want to thank you for joining us today, and we'd love to get your feedback on what you appreciated most about this session and any topics you'd like to see for future sessions. I uh, want to let you know that a recording of this presentation will be available online at www.encompassworld.com slash ICT. Um, and just to say thank you so much for joining us, and we really look forward to our next session of 10 Minutes to Task. If you would like to be added to um, the mailing list, you can email me at e-t-a-h-m-a-s-s-e-b-i at encompassworld.com. Uh, but all the information is available on the website as well. Thanks, Bita. And then as we close out, we have one more question I uh, think Mike can, can, can answer here from uh, Rabab. It says, do you have any examples of social media to help reduce stigma associated with certain diseases, such as TB, for instance? Um, sure. There, so I, you know, I would say um, that uh, one interesting example of that is using social media in the United States to reduce some of the stigma around Ebola. And I don't know of a specific kind of targeted campaign that's done that, but I've seen a lot of messaging around it um, from the CDC and from others who have tried to kind of stop the panic around Ebola and, and help people understand um, you know, everything from how it can be spread to which types of cleaners can be used to clean for, you know, and, and kill the Ebola virus. Um, so I can maybe point to some of those. I'll do a, a blog post and point to some of those uh, messages that we can take a look at. Anything else?
All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. And um, if uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us, and we'd we'd love to help with you with your social media campaigns or other things through the Task Force ICT vehicle. And we'll leave the chat boxes open for a little while, uh, just in case anyone has any additional feedback or any suggestions for us. Thank you so much. And thanks, Mike.